the legendary obsidian armor is coming in very soon and there's a lot of time getting materials for it i'm gonna tell you here the best ways of getting all of them how many do you need and how much time will it take you to get most of them so that's channel for more this and let's get into it so how do you make a legendary obsidian armor first these are the items that you need oh also this is how it looks it looks awesome this is why you probably should do it uh it looks beautiful i think the light set is probably the weakest one but look at the heavy and the medium one oof absolutely gorgeous i love them and apparently there's supposed to be some variants coming out maybe like the arena ones with different colors or different uh particle effects who knows what's gonna be so definitely worth getting it and of course it gives you all the quality of life like being able to change all your stats on all your characters whenever you want very very good but they're very expensive there's a lot of things that you need to get it so let's start talking about the all the time gated things that you actually gonna need to make your obsidian armor there are a lot of them and that's why you kind of want to start this as fast as you can especially if you want to go for the three sets for me i'm kind of struggle now because i have a lot of things that i'm missing and i only have three weeks left so i need to pump my playing to get everything done so i can get the tier three sets you don't really need the three armor lender sets i just do it because hey i'm a content creator and i like doing everything at day one so i can complain about not having any content afterwards of course that's me i'm you you know us you know how we what we do there you go so uh i'm doing it you don't have to do it though so i made this little currency tab on everything that you're gonna need that you can rebuy uh, we have essences we have map currencies we have crafting materials as well Let's start with essences uh, first, because they have a little bit of a middle ground. You can buy a few of them, but we'll get into it. So, how do you get essences? You need tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 essences in order to craft uh, this obsidian armor. So you can see, you need 3,000 essence of despair, 1,200 essence of greed, and 600 essence of triumph. This means, that, as you can see, you need a lot of them. And this is only for one piece, and you need 6. This translates to around 18,000 tier 1 essences, 7,200 tier 2 essences and 3600 tier 3 essences for one set this means 54,000 for tier 1 for three sets 21,600 tier 2s and 10,800 tier 3s for three sets. so it's a lot now how much do you get by doing tier, by doing rifts one rift gives you around 55 of each currency if you're tier 1 you get 55 if you're tier 2 you get 55 if you get tier 3 you get 55 this is assuming that you have all the buffs to do one rift so this means your mastery the one that you can see here in astral world rift mastery receive more crypto essences with closing rifts you want this one to get as many as you can also when, once you finish a convergence you get a buff that gives you more essences while you're doing rifts and the last thing is motivations. Motivations are items that you craft while using the, the, the same essences that you can use to open the rifts, but also to get more essences because you open them. Uh, it's essentially a system that incentivizes you to do motivations and open the rifts yourself instead of other people, so that way everyone is doing rifts all the time, right? You have common one for tier one, uncommon for tier two, and uh, and rare for tier three. Now, would I recommend you do crafting these ones for yourself to use them? Yes, yes, I would. Uh, would I recommend you to craft them yourself or buy them in the training post? If you make them yourself, you're going to waste some of the essences to craft them in the first place. So that means that it's going to be a bit... It'll, it'll slow you down a little bit. But if you buy them, you are kind of essentially using a bit of gold to buy essences. Because you're essentially, you know, instead of using your same essences, you, your own essences to make the motivation, you're buying someone else's to make them. So... I would actually, if you want to be fast, I would definitely buy them. If you want to be slow, but not waste money, I would craft them myself. It is also important to say, guys, that tier 2s uh, and tier 3s give you a possibility of giving an unstable crypto motivation that you can open with this coffer here, Concealed Unstable Crypt Essence Coffer. You can open it to get some essences. And that way, you essentially could eventually just buy all the essences yourself by buying a lot of motivations, on sale motivations, and then buying this one as well to open them and get all of your essences this way. These ones give you tier 1, tier 2s, and tier 3s at the same time. But they're pretty expensive. I really calculated uh, for myself, and I only need around 1,000 unstable cryptos motivations to be done with it without doing any more rifts. And there are the 5 gold, so that's like around 4 gold and a half, so it's around 4,500 gold if i buy them and the demand is not here there's not enough supply if i were to buy the whole market of motivations i could do it right now it's really not that difficult you can see that here it's only 98 so i would have a lot to farm and a lot to list in order to get 
all the ones I need myself. I'm probably going to do this by just buying them of my viewers when we do motivations. I'm going to ask, hey, guys, and you can definitely send me on my mail if you want to sell your motivations. Just send me my mail. Um, the Darren's 247, and I will buy your motivations because I need them all because I am i don't have time to do refs, sadly. Uh, I will do... I have way too much content and too much videos to do to sit there and do refs all day. Honestly, if it wasn't because there's so many things going on in my life and in content creation, I would do them. I don't really... I actually kind of like refs, but that's the situation right now. Now, if you don't want to buy them and you want to farm them yourself, let's look at how you can do this. In terms of rifts, you can, do, as you said, you get 55 for each one, but you also want to do your weekly Cryptus Rift extractions. As you can see here, you go to uh, Achievements, then go to uh, Secret Obscure, then Weekly Rift Hunting. You can see that there's this achievements every week from different zones. Each of them give you, once you do rifts in this particular zones, I'm just Skywatch, Inner Nails every week, and then uh, the other three rotate. In this case, it's Sunswept, Spark Defend, and Tangle Lefts. You get this Cryptus Rift Extractions. Each of these ones give you around, I think it was like 5, 5, and 2 or something like that. I don't actually remember. But if you get all weekly Rift Extractions, all of them, the 36 that you got to do, you get 180 of Tier 1, 180 of Tier 2, and 60 of Tier 3 every week. So very much worth doing. That is even, not even considering the fact that once you do this once in particular, let's say that you do two Tier 1s, two tier twos and one tier three you'll get 660 tier one 660 tier two and 330 tier three in total you get 1650 essences so you can divide them how you want right if you need more uh tier ones or tier twos or tier threes, you can just make all the those ones and you'll get 1650 of whichever you choose conversions give you a lot because they have a weekly achievement this happens three times a week you get 250 150 respectively and if you do Three conversions and you get the nugget achievements, which essentially just makes you kill cryptus inside of the conversions, which you most likely will be doing anyways. And if you do three conversions a week, you more or less will get around five nuggets. So this essentially translates to 1100 tier ones, 444 tier twos, and 322 uh, tier threes a week. Now, if you do the rifts and the conversions, you're gonna get 1950 tier ones, 1284 tier twos, and 612 tier threes. Pretty good amount just by doing weekly and only three times a week. It is also worth to note that every time you do a convergence, you get a hero choice chest. You can use that and you should definitely go check my hero choice chest and what you should pick overall because I did all of them. But you can choose, you can use it instead of getting gold. You can pick it to get 100 tier 1s, 40 tier 2s or 20 tier 3s. That means that you can choose one of these essences and transform your 1950 tier 1s to 150. This 1200 84 tier 2s to 1400 and 612 tier 3s to 672. Now you can do even more conversions and do 7 a week because you shouldn't do more than once a day um, to up this even more as you can see here and get way more. But it all depends on how much you want to do conversions or you want to do refs. At the end of the day, uh, you can get a good amount of conversions every week around to, no, let's just say around 2000 tier 1s, 1300 tier 2s and 700 tier 3s, more or less. That's a very, very good amount considering the fact that you need 1,800 for per set. That means that in 9 weeks, you could get one set if you only do the weeklies. And of course, this means way more for the 3 sets. But if you want to be slow at it and you don't want to think about it too much, you can definitely do it this way. As honestly, doing rifts can be very monotonous. I would only recommend it if you really, really like them. Now, off to the next thing. Crafting materials. In crafting materials, you can actually speed them up even though they're kind of time gated. The most important one here is Mystic Clovers. Mystic Clovers, you can get weekly or you can gamble them instead in order to get uh, them for a little bit of a better price. You can get 10 from raids right here on this basic magnet that exchange operative right here on Aerodon's, Aerodon's Waypoint on Lion Search. You can get 5 from Dugan in War vs. World right here on any of the Borderlands, by the way. Mystic Clovers, there you go. You can get a 10 from the Fractal Vendor by 4373, as you can see here. 5 from PEP on the League Vendor in the PEP Lobby. 5 from the Strike Vendor in the Wizard's Tower right here. And 10 one time though, not weekly, from the Wizard's Vault. As you can see, I already bought them right here in the Mystic Clovers right here. These are the only ways to get them other than actually gambling them. They all ask you for more or less the same amount of currencies usually it's a few mystic clovers a few gloves of ectoplasm a few a few spirit shards 
and a few of the whatever currency is associated to the game mode that your vendor is about. Right, in this case, it's green profit charts. Next is gonna be provisioner tokens. These ones, uh, you have to get them by only talking to these specific NPCs, and I'll leave a description on uh, this video of someone else who's made a very, very good guide about them. But you essentially talk to these provisioner tokens uh, NPCs, and they'll give you some of these provisioner tokens by you giving them a certain specific item. There's actually a website that tells you all the ones and the best and cheapest ways of getting them. As you can see here, there are the HOT ones. It tells you this is the cheapest item to buy from a trading post in order to get your provisional token. Uh, and it has everything in it. I'll leave it in the description down below. It also tells you where they are as well. You just paste this code. For example, in this case, let's say I wanted this provisional token. I, just, I would just post here and you would tell me where the vendor is. But how many provisioner tokens do you need exactly? You will need 300 per set and 900 per three sets. That is actually, it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. As you can see here, you can get actually a weekly 437 each week. That is a big amount. Now, this is very expensive to do if you really want to go for all of them. So if you want to go for the cheap ones, you can get 311 per week absolutely insane in three weeks you'll be done with all the provisional tokens you need now where do you get these ones as i said before you get them from npcs and you get the the ones that we talked about from the provisional tokens right we have a few in hot a few in cities and a few in six obscure now all of them ask you for different items and some of them are more expensive than others for example i would not recommend the the ones from the cities as they are very very expensive other than with a few specific items that are very, very cheap. I would mainly just do the Heart of the Thorns ones and the Secrets of the Obscure ones, as they're very, very cheap. That being said, there's actually a few items that you can craft yourself in order to give to these specific vendors. These are daily locked, so you can give infinite to these vendors, but you can only craft once a day these items specifically. I'm talking about charged quartz, that you only have to bring these quartz crystals into any hero challenge that you already done. You talk to it and you give it 25 quartz crystals to one charged quartz crystal. The typical one that people use is the one in your home instance that is very, very easy to get. You can just search in Google Create Obelisk Shard and it'll tell you how to get it. The typical one that people use is the Create Obelisk Shard as you can put it in your hem instance and that way you can just go in there every day and you just got, get it by using 25 lores and 15 gold to any of the uh, uh, lore vendors and you'll get it for you and it's very, very easy. The other four are from crafting professions. If you search for Mark and you most likely have the Armor Smith Mark, you'll be able to see a recipe. You'll be able to see that you have, if you're 500 level with your crafting professions, you'll be able to once a day craft this lump of methrillium, the spool of thick elonian cord, and of course the glove of elder spirit residue. This can be given to the provisional tokens from the cities for one provisional token. As, as you can see, you can only do once of them a day. You can give infinite to the provisional tokens. You might actually have a big amount if you have done this beforehand in your material storage that you can just instantly give to them for an insane amount of provisional tokens. Very, very good way of doing it. Those are four items that you can daily craft and 28 a week. That means that a day you can get around four from daily crafted and 25 for NPCs, 18 for cities, even though those are very, very expensive. So I would not recommend. We can as well go to the World's Warp and their MPP vendor that we talked about beforehand and actually trade their currencies for provisional tokens as well. You can get 25 weekly from the World's War one and 15 weekly for the PvP one. You can also do raid CMs which are a bit difficult to learn, but you definitely can do it if you want, and get 26 for free just by clearing them every week. In total, as I said, this will amount to 437 if you do everything, everything, everything a week, and 311 if you only do the cheap ones, very, very easy to, want, to get ones. I guess if you don't do the weekly rate CMs, it will transform to 285 if you don't do your yeah your weekly CMs, but on that, you can get you know, 311 if you uh, do everything. Uh, that is very cheap and easy to do. Depending on how many you need, take this into account. I'll definitely leave this whole Excel sheet down below so you can check it and, uh, you know, make your plan for how many provisional tokens you need a week, how many you need a day, how many do you, sets do you want, and all this other stuff. The last two things that we're going to talk about now are currencies from the map of Secret of Obscure. So how does this work? In order to get your obsidian armor, you're going to need each map's associated currency to make this legendary in case of archipelago you have static charges that transform into case of capture lighting you have 250 of them you're gonna need 
pinch of stardust if you need for Amnetas. So 250 pinch of stardust transform into one punch of stardust and 250 classified gasps that transform into one cloud of congealed screams. Now, how many do you actually need? You need 250 of the small currencies per one piece and five of the big currencies per one piece. This translates to 1500 of the small currency for each map for one set, 30 of the big uh, currency from each map per set. In total, in terms of like all the currency that this means, because each of these big currencies is essentially 250 of the small currency, it would mean 500 uh, of the small currency in total. Now for three sets, you're gonna need 1500 currency of each of the maps. So it's a very big amount, but you can also get a very good amount every day regardless. But how do you get them? Each map has a meta associated with it, and each of those metas gives you a little bit of the currency. Each of the metas gives you one big currency, as you can choose it in the hero choice chest, and it's not worth for you to pick the smallest one, as it gives you less. It only gives you 100, and this means 250 of the mini currency. And you should always pick the big currency, as this means 250 of the small currency, and the other option, where you can see here the uh, you have the option of smaller currency it will only give you 100 of small currency so always pick the big one instead this means that each meta will give you 250 plus whatever you know the little events in between the meta will give you in case of archipelago you get 275 in terms of amandas you'll get 280 and in case of any Irenaeus, you'll get 21. you can also collect the orbs around these specific maps to get the currency of that specific map as well. I don't know if you have seen, but around the maps in uh, Secret of Obscure, you can see these little orbs. And each of these orbs, when you, once you pick them up, they'll give you a bit of the associated currency. This will be daily, and you can get a very specific amount. In Abnidas and Archipelago, you're only going to be able to get 100 of this currency by collecting these orbs, and in Irenaeus, only 300. So a very, very good amount. The place where I would farm this is in Archipelago. I would just go around this little place in Dorkless Light. I would climb the little tower here, over and over again until I get all of the currencies as there's a lot of automatic around uh, moving around here uh, if I run out uh, I'll just change maps or wait until they respawn and do it again for Amnetas the only good place to do it is actually right here as there's not many other places to get a lot of uh, that magic and there's a lot of the here and just respawns all the time uh, you can change maps as well. And in Inner Nails, it's the very difficult one. As Inner Nails, you get a good amount. You need to farm a good amount to get the max cap. And there's not that many spots to put to get it from. There's one spot here. There's another spot uh, around this Hair's Dominion name here, uh, where there, an event happens uh, where you have to collect stuff. So you can do it mine while you're collecting the magic. There's another one around this Spire. There's an another one to get into this mastery. And there's another one here on this side as well. Uh, once you're done and you collect collected all of them, change maps or just wait until it responds. In total, in terms of how many currencies weekly you're going to be able to get, you're going to get around 2,700 for Archipelago and Amnetas and 2,900, almost 3,000 for Inner Nails. So considering the fact that you need only 7,500 of each one for every tier, you'll be able to get this one's in almost a little more than three weeks so very very easy as long as you do it every day all the three sets is gonna be around nine weeks so a, a big amount but eh, it's three sets it's gonna be take longer that being said you can actually skip a bit of archipelago and amnitas uh grind by instead of doing the metas you can just do boop, you can just do the pp and warfare's world particularly obscure reward track it'll gives you a little bit of the currency of each it doesn't apply to inner nails it doesn't give you any inner nails currency which definitely sucks and that you're gonna have to farm it. Uh, but that's about it the last thing that we need to have on the list is unusual coins the way that you should farm this ones is honestly doing the great wizard's chest i don't know if you've seen them but i actually already made a video on how to farm this in particular but there's this little chest around each of the maps in secret obscure that you can open in order to get the unusual coin currency you can get them once a day and i'm just gonna do one here right now as you can see you need to do this little opening here and i made a video on how to get uh, the best route in order to get them. So I'll leave it in the description so you can check it out. But just open them and you get a good amount of unusual coins. There you go. You get eight unusual coins on average on each of these chests. You can get 10 chests in Archipelago, two chests in Amnetas, and one in Inner Neos. You actually can get three in Amnetas, but one is lost behind events, so I would not really recommend you unless you have someone parked there, so I'm not going to count it, honestly. This translates to 728 weekly unusual 
coins, which is not pretty bad. That means that in two weeks, you'll be done more or less with one set. And this means that you'll need six weeks to from scratch to do three sets. Pretty easy. And if you are actually running out and you need more, you can always do the, the Fox's achievements in Amrita's in Archipelago. As you can see, you have to collect these little mini games in here. Uh, it's kind of annoying. I would definitely not recommend it unless you're very, very uh, desperate to do it. And you also can do the lesser arcane chests as well, which give you way less. They give you, instead of eight, they give you around four to six. So around, you know, five on average, but it's still worth it. And you can just farm them there. A lot of them, as you can see, in the maps maybe do a little bit of a, of a guide on how to do the lesser ones as i might actually need to farm a little bit but i would recommend lesser arcane just all over the time rather than the fantastic foxes achievements unless you haven't done it do it at least once also a very important part of the chest though is that you do need a mastery in order to open them you need the in hearts of the obscure research you need the greater and lesser arcane treasure masteries otherwise you cannot open them and you're not going to be able to get any of them I almost forgot about the Astral Ward Armor and Onir Spawn Armor. Both of these ones need to be uh, crafted at least once in order to, for you to unlock the items to make the legendary armor. Uh, they look very nice, as you can see here. These dice are a bit questionable, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why they picked these ones, but look, it does look cool. Those dice are completely fucked. That, that's just... No, look at that, that looks much better. Like, yeah, there you go. It's like supposed to be this Cryptus armor-like thing that honestly, I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool set. And the Astral Ward armor, these dice are better. Uh, as, as you can see here, you need both of the sets in order to make the Lendia armor. Now, they don't require you to get that much uh, items. All right, as you can see here, it asks you for six purified Cryptus essences, which are a bit of gold, uh, but they don't need that many uh, essences in the first place. Look at that. 1500 essence of despair, 600 of greed, and 300 of triumph. You can do this in a week very easily. Actually, less than a week. And with the Oniris spawn armor, as you also need it, this uh, also the same amount. So, honestly, in terms of essences, in one week of just doing the weekly convergences every, hopefully every day, and a week, every weekly rift, you'll be able to get them very easily. Maybe you'll have a little bit uh, less of tier ones, but you can just do a few tier ones. Just, you know, go in there, just search for them, and you'll be able to get all the ones you need. In terms of uh, the currencies, as you can see for the Astral Ward armor, you need six punches of Stardust, six cases of Capture Lighting, one for Amnetas, one for Skywatch, and six metas, very easy to do in one week. You can even miss a day, you'll be fine. And in here, for the Onerous one, you need six slot of con Congealed Screams, which is also only six days, so it's very, very easy. The rest is just gold, you know, gifts of blood, gifts of bone, blah, blah, blah. So honestly, you can do this in one week. It's very, very easy. It won't take you that long. And it looks awesome. So even if, you, if you're not going for the legendary armor, go at it. Might as well, okay? You do need the Astral Craft Mastery, as you can see here, uh, in order to unlock them. But uh, it's not it's not that bad. And you should get it anyways, because it gives you a lot of recipes. It unlocks a lot of recipes from Lear and as well, anyways, as you can see here. So definitely do it. Now we're going to get into the all the materials that you have to buy. Uh, not with time, but with the actual gold. And they're not time-gated at all. Uh, first, we're going to start talking about the gifts of uh, fangs, bones, claws, all of this ones. Um, in order to get your gift of might or prosperity or gift of magical prosperity. You need any of them, right? Doesn't really matter. So depending on the materials you have, you can craft the gift of condensed might that requires fangs, bones, claws, and scales. Or the gift of condensed magic, blood, totems, venom, and dust. They more or less go around the same price anyways. Uh, so don't worry too much about it, just depending on the amount of materials you have uh, or the ones you're gonna end up buying. Of course, you can also buy, you know, in order to get these materials that you need, for example, Gift of Fangs, Neary Cars, you know, this Fang, this, well, there we go, Vicious Fang, Large Fang, Sharp Fang, and Fang. They come from different places in the game, uh, and I wouldn't really farm them, I would just buy them through a trading post, or what I would do is I would go to this guy, Kjep Corzon, uh, I would buy some of the there you go some of these materials here from living season 4 that give you volatile magic i would consume them right uh because you consume them they transform to volatile magic and then i would talk to karen fallen school here and volatile magic exchange and i would go for trophy shipment this will give you as you can see here it'll it'll go to one gold but it will be worth it you will make a profit and it will give you random uh, materials that you'll be able to use to skiffs. So definitely, definitely do this. And if you want to farm them, just do Living Season 4 metas and Icebridge Saga metas. And you'll be fine. This is a Knight of the North, by the way. 
is the best way of doing it. And then you can just walk on top of here to your armors, to your weaponsmith, your huntsman, or your artificer, and create the gifts. You need 400 um, of these disciplines in order to make this, by the way. And you can see the gifts of blood, gifts of gifts, gift, uh, gifts of fangs, bones, dust, totems, scales, claws, and everything. And by the way, in order to get the recipe, as you can see here, you can just get it from Miyani in the uh, Mystic Forge in Lion's Arch. Uh, any uh, any time there is a Mystic Forge, there will be an um, an NPC on the side that will send you this that will sell you these recipes. After that, you transform. Uh, you know, after you get all your gifts, you forge them together in the Mystic Forge. To get, yeah, and uh, you will. Well, I don't have them right now, and they will transform into. The gift of condensed magic on the gift of condensed magic. If you do not have an artificer level 400, you can just go to Lair in Horno in the Wizard's Tower, uh, right here under this little bridge here, and you'll be able to buy it uh, from him by essentially just purchasing uh, by giving him 10 gloves of ectoplasm that he usually doesn't take um, to craft this item, right? But that way you don't you have to, you can skip the. Uh, Having an artificial huntsman or weaponsman to level 400, I would definitely recommend you to level up anyways, as having this proficiency, this uh, professions, is worth it and it will make you gold. But you can do that if you're desperate. The other thing that you're gonna end up needing is hydraulic catalytic reagents. That you, uh, in order to purchase them, you need uh, to use your research notes uh, in order to get them. Uh, you need a lot of them, as you need 200, actually you need 500 research notes for each of the pieces. That translates to 500, uh, you know, hydraulic reagents, boom, 500, 100 times 6, that is, that's one full set, oh, 3,000, and if you want three sets, that's 9,000 hydraulic reagents. And each hydraulic reagent is 50 research notes, so that's about 450,000 research notes. Actually, no, wait, divide by 10, because... 50 versions give it 10. It's actually kind of this weird there. There we go. Divide by 10. 45,000. 45,000. That's too much. 45,000 research notes. So there's a lot of research notes that you can definitely do it. And I'll explain you how, but it will take you some time and some gold in order to, to get this. So the way that you get your research notes is by going to any of the vendors like Armorsmith, uh, Artificer, all of these ones, and you go. You buy some supplies, you go to get some tools, and you get a research kit. These research kits appear in. Honestly, a lot of vendors, uh, as long as they have any salvage kit uh, with them, they will give you a research note, uh, research kit. So it should be very easy to get uh, any of them. You can always go to the weekend check which ones have it close to you, but yeah, it's it's gonna be very easy. Buy one, you get one, and then you use your search kit on any item that has been crafted by, crafted by a player. As you can see, I have potions, relics, uh, sigils, runes, bow, um, wood. Um, Enchantments, all this kind of stuff. Now the thing is, not every one of them is going to be worth it because some of them give you a lot of research notes for very little price because this item is very cheap, and some of them give you a, um, very very little research notes for a, um, an item that is very very expensive. For example, these potions are kind of—they're not very expensive. They're a bit expensive compared to other potions. And look at that—it only gave me one. Not worth it. So what you want to do is find out which um, research note, which uh, items are very very cheap and give you a lot of research notes. You can go to fast and check which items you should salvage with the research salvages kits. I know to get the most research notes and the fastest way and the cheapest ways, of course. You can see all this in fast. Just go to savaging cost per research note and you'll be able to see it. The next thing that you can get is essences of luck, which are pretty easy to get. You just have to salvage a lot of items. What you want to do is going to, you know, open your pieces of identify gear, the, the green ones. As um, right now, and this could change, by the way, so be careful. They are, uh, you gain some money by opening them and uh, buying them from the trading post and uh, opening them. So it's actually worth to do it. And even if it wasn't, you need the luck anyway, so might as well. And you want to, you know, you get your luck, but you don't get orange luck. Also, go for the yellow ones. They will give you more luck and it will be uh, faster. That being said, you'll get blue, green, and uh, yellow luck. And this, you'll have to transform it into the orange luck to use it. So you want to, boop, go in here into your artificial station. You actually don't only need... You can just get a level 1 artificial, artificial and it'll be fine. First you get a master lo lock, you scrap one, you know, boom. You then use this master lock to get the rare one, boom. And then you use the uh, rare ones when you have two to make the orange one. As you can see, I kind of run out, so, but yeah, you, you know, just upgrade it until the end, until you have enough. 
uh, you will need 1500 luck for one set and 4500 for the three sets. So it's a lot of luck you're going to have to get. But it's definitely doable and you can just, you know, put gold in and get the luck out very easily. For the cube of civilized dark energy, the last thing you're going to be able to buy is get civilizing mantras by doing fractals or you can just buy them from trainer post and you're going to need also a ball of dark energy that you get by savaging some ascended weapon or armor. You can also... Uh, although it's a very low chance to get ascended, uh, ascended amulet, accessories, back items, or aquatic headgear, I would not recommend that. Just get a weapon or an armor that you can craft it by uh, using a discipline. You can get it from raids, from strikes, by doing them, or by using the currency, or uh, you can do a fractal as well, one ascended. There's definitely a lot of guides on which ascended you can get, and the, the fastest way to get one ascended weapon or an armor, so definitely go and uh, check one of those in order to get one of these armors or weapons and then salvage that and get your bow because you don't want to be, you know, and your balls because you're going to need six per set. So it's, it's a good amount. You're going to need a lot of ascended for this one. Most of the time, for example, for me, I already have a lot of these um, balls of dark energy, so it's not really an issue, but yeah. And you might be one of those people as well. Now, that is everything that you can actually buy with gold and it's not time-gated in some sort of way. That's it. That's all the items you need, all the time gates as well in order to get legendary armor. I would recommend you to have a, you know, reasonable plan on when you want this. In particular, if you want to start now, it's going to be very, very difficult to get the three sets. Honestly, probably impossible. But you can probably get at least one tier set if you start now. Because you most likely have a bit of the currencies of each one uh, already in your wallet. As you probably have played a bit of Secrets of the Obscure anyway. That being said, don't sweat it. Nothing's going to happen. The legendary is still going to be here. And honestly, it's even better to wait a little bit. Considering the fact that... The variants are probably going to take way longer to be released. And also, remember that the most of the materials are going to go down in price, the ones that you can actually buy, the more you wait after the release. So don't sweat it. It's fine. They look awesome, but it's a video game. Have fun. Don't stress out. Life has enough stress in it already. Have fun. And of course, go watch my Twitch. Follow me on Twitch so you can see when I'm... Uh, farming this as we're doing the legendary and we'll make another video about that one the legendary armor meta train when we do all of the chests we do all the metas that we need and we collect the currency as well so you can get most of these items while we're playing together in the meta train so thank you very much for watching see you guys around love you all subscribe to the channel bye bye